Let's go over how to solve this following limit. So we have the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus x minus 6 all over x minus 2. So as always, the first thing that we want to do is we want to plug in the value that x is approaching into our function. In this case, x is approaching 2, so we want to plug in 2 into our function. And when we do that, that will give us 2 squared plus 2 minus 6 all over 2 minus 2. So when we simplify the top, we know that 2 squared is 4, and that will leave us with 4 plus 2 minus 6. 4 plus 2 is 6, and then 6 minus 6 is 0. And then the bottom is just 2 minus 2, which is also 0. So when we evaluate this limit, we get 0 over 0. And as you know, 0 over 0 is what we call our indeterminate form. And it's important to know that this does not mean that our limit is DNE, because you might think, well, 0 is in the denominator, so that means it's DNE. In this case, no, that does not mean that. Also, it's important to note that the limit will not be 0. And also, you might think, well, anything divided by itself is 1, so 0 divided by 0 is just 1. In this case, no, it's not going to be DNE, 0, or 1, which is why we call it indeterminate, because it's just a special case. But it's important to note that we can't leave it at 0 over 0. We can't say, well, the limit is 0 over 0, 1 and done. There you have it. We can't do that. So in this case, we have to use some algebraic techniques to get it out of this form. Now, the goal with these indeterminate limits, I like to say, is you want to cancel something out. And what you want to cancel is what we call holes. Now, holes might ring a bell because this goes back to when you're learning about rational functions, you learned about something called holes. And essentially, holes is basically when there's a common factor in both the numerator and denominator. So when they have a common factor, you can cancel those out. But essentially, what that means is since there's a common factor in the numerator and denominator, it means there's like a point of discontinuity in that point of the function. So Basically, the idea is what we want to do is we want to use some algebraic techniques to get rid of those holes in our limit. And basically, once we cancel out those holes, we want to reevaluate. And the whole goal is to cancel out the holes. That's all I got to say. <laughs> so how are we going to cancel out the holes for this limit? What are we going to do? Well, in this case, what we are going to do is we are going to factor our function. So starting with the top, we have x squared plus x minus 6. So when it comes to factoring trinomials, meals, in this case, if you've noticed, there's nothing in front of the x squared, so we're going to factor it as follows. So I always say when you factor trinomials meals where the coefficient is 1, um, you want to focus on the last term, which is negative 6 in this case, and then the middle coefficient, which is 1 since there's really nothing in front of the x. So what you want to do is you want to find two numbers that will both multiply to give you your last term and add to give you your middle coefficient. So we want to find two numbers that will both multiply to give us negative 6 and add to give us positive 1. This might be a little tricky, so I always say focus on pairs that will multiply to give you negative 6 and then from there go down the line to see which one pair is going to add to also give you 1. So in this case, pairs that I can think of would be maybe negative 6 and 1 because negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. Um, you can also do 3 and negative 2, and you can also do, say, negative 3 and 2. Those all work. They all multiply give you negative 6. Next thing we want to do is we want to go down the line to see which one is going to give us, add to give us 1. So if we do our first pair, we have negative 6 times 1, but negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5, so that's not going to work. But if we look at our next pair, we have 3 and negative 2. 3 plus negative 2 is 1, which works. Um, so in this case, our numbers is going to be 3 and negative 2. We don't need to check the last one because we already found the, the pair that works. So when we factor it, you're going to factor it as follows, where it will become x plus 3 times x minus 2. Okay. Our bottom is x minus 2. We don't need to factor it anymore. It's, it's, it's as, as factored as can be. Um, so the next thing that we want to do is I want you to notice that in our numerator we have x minus 2 and in our denominator we also have x minus 2. Since we have x minus 2 in both the top and bottom, this indicates that this is a whole, which means we can cancel these out. So we're going to cancel out the x minus 2, and when we do that, that will just simplify and give us x plus 3. Now, the whole goal with indeterminate limits is to cancel something out, and once you cancel something out, this is when you can reevaluate your limit. But it's important to note to reevaluate the limit once the function has been simpl simplified. Do not replug it in to the original function. So we're going to plug in 2 into our new simplified function, which is x plus 3. 
So we're gonna do two plus three, and then two plus three is five. Therefore, our limit is going to be five. And there you have it.